I recently bought a Phi M air horn kit for my SUV. Now it's a nice kit except that it comes with no instructions whatsoever. Now that isn't a big deal for those of us who are motorheads and you know like to do everything ourselves and understand it. But for those who want to do their own installation but they're a little leery of wiring this should help you uh, do it. it. It's a pretty basic installation. If you do it the way FIAM wants, it's only uh, two wires. One ties to your horn, one goes to ground. So here's the kit itself. Comes with the compressor. The nice yellow knife there, it isn't included. Uh, high horn, low horn, a uh, wrap of vinyl tubing for connecting the compressor to the horns. There's also a small package, um, I didn't mark it here, contains your brackets, bolts, nuts, uh, another relay, horn relay, to replace your old one, and uh, Y fitting that connects the single line from the air compressor to the two horns. Now this is how I did my installation. It's a little more complicated because it uses a second relay. Uh, it's not that hard and it's not necessary. It's just one of those things I like because it gives me uh, power directly from the battery to the compressor. Plus I put in slightly heavier wiring than the original horn wiring. So when you're adding amperage to a system, it never hurts to be a little safer. Now the next couple of slides are going to deal with relays. If you understand relays, you can jump over them. Uh, but this is for the people who haven't done this or maybe don't quite understand it. A relay is a simple electrically triggered switch. It takes low amperage and controls high amperage. Now the reason they do this is because it, it puts a lot of wear on switches and buttons when you're running high amperage through them. The relay is made or designed to handle that amperage. That way your button, all it's doing is triggering the relay. Now in this case, number 30 is your power in from either battery or um, fuse box, whichever. The switch in this case is your horn button. That is your trigger ground goes directly to ground from 86 and 87 is your power out that goes to your horn. Now this is what's called a flip-flop relay. It works the same way as the four pin does except it has a fifth pin 87A. 87A has power all the time that number 30 has power. So in other words, if you have, say, headlights, you pull your headlight switch on, that powers number 30, which then powers 87A, which would go to your low beams. Now in this case, your trigger would be controlled by your high beam switch. You hit your high beam switch, that powers the trigger, the trigger, this relay then flips from 87A to 87, which would turn on your high beams. The reason I put this in here is it's fairly common relay to find, and it can be used for your horn. You simply ignore 87A. You leave it empty. Uh, you would connect your horn to 87, the same as you would in the four pin. Now, this is another 5-pin relay, works exactly the same way, wired exactly the same way. The only difference is it's a rectangular relay. It's smaller. Uh, a lot of newer vehicles have a bunch of these. If you have a fuse box in your engine compartment and you look at it, you'll probably see two or three of these rectangular relays. This is the type of relay I used simply because I had one. Um, it came actually came out of a Ford. Uh, a friend of mine scraps cars, and whenever I go through, I uh, tend to go through the fuse boxes and pull all the fuses and relays and everything that I use for fooling around with electrical. 
So this is your wiring here. On the left you see your factory wiring. Very simple. Power from the fuse box goes to your relay. The ground normally goes to your horn button. They don't uh, they don't run power up into the uh, into the steering column for it. The other power I show coming from the battery, normally it would be fused as well through some sort of a fuse or fusible link. Out the other side is the power wire to your horn. Now modern horns uh, usually have two wire, one power, one ground. The older systems tended to have a single power wire and the horn grounded through itself to the body. On the right is the system that FIM probably expects you to use. And once again, it's very simple. You're using the existing horn relay to run your air horn. All you do is find your horn, find the power wire to it, tap into it, run that wire to the positive of your FIM compressor. The compressor then the ground runs to a ground um, simple screw right beside the compressor does the job. So everything is simple. It's already fused because your existing horn is fused. It uh, already is connected to your horn button. So everything will work. The only thing you have to do is run two wires. One wire from the power of the horn and one wire to ground. Now this is the system I used. It's a little more complicated because I use a secondary relay. The reason I use that relay is I can run power directly from the battery to the compressor. The horn on my particular vehicle is on the driver's side. So by mounting the horn on the passenger side, it's a fairly long wire. So to cut down on the amperage that I'm running through that wire and through the original horn system, I powered my compressor directly from the battery connection at the fuse box in the engine compartment. A little more complicated, but it's a system I think works a little bit better. Now, as you can see, I ran power from the positive through a fuse to the relay. That's the power to the horn once the relay is triggered. I still run my trigger from the horn wire. That way my horn button runs both systems. You could run a second button inside so you only use your air horns when you press that button. Um, I'm not a fan of that because then you're looking for the button and it's a little slower. If I need my horn, I need it right away. So this is my mounting on the horns. You want your horns out of the weather. You want your horns to be pretty much facing forward. And you want them aware, away from any amount of heat, such as an exhaust manifold or exhaust pipe. Um, even the engine itself puts off a fair bit of heat, but the horns should be able to take that heat. In my case, I didn't use the bolts and nuts. What I did is I drilled into this suspension bar. I tapped it and put the bolts directly into the holes. Uh, just a little simpler than trying to find a place that I could use nuts and bolts or using longer bolts. And the bar was a lot thick to handle the threading. This is my mounting of the compressor. I mounted it on the fender well. Right beside it is the second relay that I put in. Both are grounded through screws to the body. Now I prefer to use screws for grounds than bolts because they are in direct contact with the metal. A uh, bolt you have to clean a spot and that will rust after a while and you end up having to take it apart, clean it. So it's just a little bit simpler and it'll last longer before it creates any grounding issues. Once again, this is how I did my installation. I put in a fuse between the battery positive and the relay. 
uh, you'll notice it's a fair bit heavier wire than the original horn wire would be. Um, so it, cre it gives a little more amperage or amperage ability to the compressor. And that's pretty much all of it. Now, if you are using crimp connectors, you need to seal the ends of the connectors. Some of the newer connectors come already shrinkable, but even at that, the shrink tubing does not bind to the um, coating on the wire. It simply shrinks down snug against it. So you can have moisture get in through that and it will corrode the wiring, especially with electricity running through it. Uh, although horns don't have electrical all the time, once corrosion starts from the electrical and the water, it will continue. So what I like to do, if you're using just a plain old plastic butt connectors, you can use either um, silicone squeeze it into the end of the butt connector so it seals the connector to the wiring or you can do as I do which is use what they call liquid tape which is basically a liquid neoprene coat the wire around on each end of the butt connector slide some shrink tubing over it and shrink it down the, the uh, neoprene will then seal connector or the shrink tubing directly to the coating on the wire. That creates a waterproof seal and it will help maintain the wire for a longer period. The other one, the, uh, sh the shrinkable butt connectors, I would do the same thing before you shrink the ends. Put a little bit of liquid tape on the inside. When it shrinks down then the neoprene will seal that shrink to the co coating on the wire. It, All of your wiring in the engine compartment is going to be out in the open. Basically, it's out in the elements. You have splash, you have heat, you have heating and cooling, which creates condensation, all of that. So you want to seal it as the best you can so that it doesn't allow any moisture into the system. Moisture and electricity or copper creates uh, corrosion. Now in my case I do all soldering. I rarely use any crimp connectors um, and when I do I, um, I coat my solder and a little bit of the wiring with the liquid neoprene. I then put my shrink, my shrink tubing down which seals to the neoprene creating a weatherproof seal. It's, I believe, necessary. You want to keep your system working as long as possible without issues and without corrosion. So that's how um, I did it. It's also, I also show the simple way. The only thing you need to supply is some wire because uh, FIAM does not supply any wire. Um, you know, so a couple of lengths of red and black, and you're in business. I hope this helps. Uh, enjoy doing your installation, and enjoy scaring the crap out of everybody when you lay on those horns. Have a good day. Goodbye.